World leaders have reacted to North Korea's latest ballistic missile test launch, which ended with the intermediate-range projectile landing in the Sea of Japan. U.S. President Donald Trump has in a statement called on all nations to impose tougher sanctions on Pyongyang. The statement, which was released after Trump's briefing on the issue, calls North Korea a flagrant menace, adding that the threat has been going on for too long. Trump also said that Russia should be worried because the missile landed closer to Russia than Japan. Japanese officials were, however, among the first to react. Once again, North Korea has launched a ballistic missile despite a strong warnings from the international community. This is unacceptable. We strongly protest. Japan's defense ministry added that Pyongyang may have fired a new type of missile. Meanwhile, South Korea's new president has condemned the launch following an emergency meeting with national security advisors. Moon Jae-in says dialogue with the North is only possible when Pyongyang shows a change in attitude. This is while prior to the test launch, a top North Korean diplomat had announced willingness to hold talks with Washington under the right conditions. North Korea says its missile and nuclear programs are in response to aggressive U.S. policies. To get more insight into the story, let's go live to Ontario in Canada to talk to Jason Androhe, political commentator and analyst. Mr. Androhe, it's a pleasure to have you with us. So. Another missile test by North Korea and reactions from around the world, particularly Japan, South Korea and the U.S. What's your take on this latest missile test by the North? I think it definitely sends a very clear message that despite the new South Korean President Moon's decision to revive the sunshine policy, the DPRK is singularly unwilling to relinquish its uh, best means to deter an invasion against itself. Uh, the, the problem is that the situation is being looked at from the wrong perspective. They're just looking at ways to uh, de-incentivize the DPRK from having a nuclear weapons program. And the, the, the basis is that they just want it for some reason or that they're just being hostile to other people. Thus, every time they switch to a new mode of uh, trying to get them to relinquish the program, it doesn't work. They try hostility, they try st sunshine, in both cases, it hasn't worked. The problem is that the basis for the DPRK wanting a nuclear deterrent is that they live under the threat of U.S. imperialist invasion. And that perspective is not being given by the mainstream media. If we were to simply take the mainstream media's narrative, we would assume that the DPRK is just being irrational, just going around building nuclear weapons because they want to or to threaten the world when that's not the case. You start from a false assumption, then you receive an illogical conclusion. But rather than acknowledge that their conclusion is irrational, they just simply try to portray the DPRK or Kim Jong-un, the leader, as somehow irrational themselves. When if you begin from the understanding that they're trying to defend themselves from a larger power, which they, they certainly do have a right to be concerned, then we do understand why, that, regardless of a soft, or, a soft or hard stance, they continue to maintain their right to build and develop nuclear uh, weapons as a deterrent. Mr. Onroha, given the recent developments in the region, the uh, election of the new South Korean president who had expressed willingness to hold um, negotiations with North Korea and uh, sort of bring peace and stability to the region, um, and the remarks by a North, top North Korean diplomat was talked of willingness to hold talks with Washington under the right conditions. So some people, maybe they were seeing some rays of hope that there would be some sort of a, a, a the beginning of, to a solution to this uh, situation in the Korean Peninsula. Yet we see the missile test and the threats by the U.S. again of stronger uh, sanctions. Well, there, there could be a diplomatic solution, but the DPRK would be completely foolish to just abandon its nuclear deterrence against invasion. There's a very real threat against them. And nothing is going to get rid of that until the country that is threatening them, the United States, were to somehow cease to exist. 
there, there can still be a measure of cooperation for uh, joint industrial zones can be reopened, which would benefit uh, both the North and the South uh, collectively, which they could certainly agree to. However, there's nothing that the South can really offer the DPRK to have them abandon their program because they can't actually do anything about the threat that hangs over their head, which is what prompts them to have a nuclear deterrent to begin with. So while there can be some measure of cooperation between the two countries, the longstanding threat that instigates and perpetuates this entire situation remains unchallenged. Okay, thank you so much, Jason Andre, political commentator and analyst joining us live from Ontario in Canada. Thanks for your time and your thoughts.